morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming so early. Hope you're already awake for my presentation. <laughs> um, also, thanks for, from Asia Society Tokyo and also Asia Society Hong Kong to put me here today. Um, of course, most of you are not very familiar with my work because I was born in, from Hong Kong. Um, my career is not start as an artist, I'm not trained as an artist. I, from advertising, as just mentioned, graphic design and advertising is my careers and also my job. So I think visual communication and visual art is a definite, is, is, is a two different world. Uh, yes, I did a lot in my 40 years work as an advertising creative director for big corporate as a subway station. Uh, for charity, environmental group, for Levi's whole Asia. That, in that time that I, I, I came to Tokyo every two weeks, because my, the major client in Asia for this brand is in Tokyo. So this is my job running advertising for commercial brands. For f film from Wong Kar Wai, I think this is also one of the f uh, 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 important film directors, also uh, Japanese like his film. Uh, I did a lot of co corporate logos and designs and sometimes interior design, uh, books, of course. And actually in 2015, I, I sort of invited by GGG, Ginser Graphic Gallery, to, to, to do my uh, uh, solo shows uh, uh, there. So this is 2015 in, in Ginza. And then 2019, I was summing up my 40 years of career. So this is a big, uh, huge retrospective show is in Hong Kong, Heritage, uh, Hong Kong Heritage Museum. So everything is just done to recap all my 40 years work. And also that show, Time Will Tell in Heritage Museum, is not showcase my record or how good I'm a, a creative person, yet I want to talk about the process. The time will tell the process of my career. In fact, to start my story today, actually back to 1993, when I was in advertising company, I'm, I'm winning awards and I got good salaries and I got good clients at like the, the subway corporate. Then I have a dream one day that I die. The day I die in hospital, that's the, what the dream is about. Okay, all my families and looking down and I'm sleeping on the bed, looking to the ceiling. Then probably this is my last word. Then I will go. Then this one, no, no pain though. Everyone is very calm. Everyone just not, no one crying. Then I just say my last word. I say, okay, no regrets. I'm happy. I got good life. I'm very, I have a good creative life. That's why I said. But of course, my family is not in the creative field. And they did, what, what do you mean by you have good creative life? Then I elaborate a little bit. Like, oh, I helping MTR the subway station get more passengers. I helping Levi's to get to so sell more jeans and so on. Then I woke up. Oh, this is only a dream. I didn't die. Okay. So I, I keep thinking about this dream. Well, I was 30 something. I'm one of the top advertising creative in Asia. If I'm carry on, yes, that's my life until I retire, until the day I'm getting old, getting sick. And then that moment, definitely I will sum up my life, should be like that. That's my creative life. So I says I could not accept this because this is this is mutual benefit. I earn a living. I use my little creativity to helping clients about the image, about their sales. But it's not me. So I decided, besides my commercial career, what should I do for myself? That's that's why I pick up my name. I name another another mountain man as my artist name. I don't know what to do, basically, but 
I want to do something else for myself besides Stanley Wong is on the advertising. So I decided oh, my only skill is on advertising is about communication, to push one message, to sell, to make voice. So what kind of voice that I treasure, I value most? I find out it's about the society, about peoples in harmony. That, that's how I, that is most important. So I decided another mountain man, which is named after a Qing and Ming dynasty, a painter, very important painter, that he called a great mountain man. So I named after him, that's another mountain man. And then one day I would do something along that, that about human harmony. So not until 2001, then I start to do my personal work besides the advertising. And then the red, white, right, blue, I think this is from the Japanese bullshit, right? That how we do it in the construction side that I use this material very often in Hong Kong to symbolize the positive Hong Kong. Okay, I, I do a lot of installation in around the world and posters, two dimensional, three dimensional, uh, outside the street. It's all about the society, about the positive spirit. Also in Venice, Biennial 2000, 2005, yeah, 2005, 2005 right. Uh, so I, I built a tea house about the people's communication. And then like in Taiwan also, they wrap the whole buildings about the, the, the positive and negative side of the city of, of the Taiwan. So um, this is about, this is how I promised myself, this is how I start. I mean, I did this red, right boot. They, they call me Mr. Red, right boot in Hong Kong anyway. And then it's con continuously about 20 years, uh, about maybe 100 souls are, are in the world on this material and these symbols. But today, I want to move on to talk about something else. This is about a society, about people's relation. And along the road, among last 20 years, when I do my personal work, somehow I engage Buddhism. So I'm a Buddhist uh, now. And then when I learn more about Buddhism as a philosophy, then I said, oh, something very interesting kind of thinking that I should translate it to the, my friends in the art scene or maybe public that those messages. Say for example, like you, you, you read these uh, images in, in, in our promotion then somehow this is installation and photography I did uh, uh, in South from China and then I did another one in Hong Kong and Singapore too. So when you read it, I don't know how you see, how you, okay, give me some response. What's the, what's the feeling of this? Quiet. Don't think, just immediately. Peace, quiet. Peace, okay. Any other? Surprise, Surprise. okay. More? Silence. Silence. A bonsai, yeah, it's a very big bonsai, yes. Someone will say lonely. Someone will say negative, someone will say positive, actually. Then when you go on, definitely you have something in your mind. I, I still remember one time I was in Singapore uh, talking to the, the, the students, the Singaporean young man. He said this tree is pulling going to be thrown away as a rubbish. Surprise, right? That's how he react. Anyway, so further, the, I did this project is, I, actually, I just want to see how you respond, basically. Uh, it's called Heaven on Earth. Of course, you will see in different manner. You will say it's an illusion. Someone will say it's a, like an oasis. To me, it's like a heaven on Earth. But somehow, in, in, in Buddhism thinking, what you see actually is only reflecting what your mind, your heart is about. It's nothing about the absolute things with the answer. That's how we, how we see it. When you're watching it, basically it's a reflection. It's about yourself. 
So this is how I want to do this project to bring this uh, thinking or maybe message to audience. So another one along this Zen and Buddhism manner is uh, another like an installation setup. Usually you will see this not like a piece of art, but just a reading room. Normally when you encounter this work, then you say, okay, there's a sofa, there's a table, there's a bookshelf, some books. Uh, I'm interested to flip it and not, then I will go on and sit for a while. So this meant to be like that. You just, I just attract you to sit down. And then at the end, these three pieces of furniture will come back the end of the show. But these three elements will be composed in the other form become a coven. Basically, this is the, when you are alive, that you use this as your daily furniture, daily objects. But I think when one day you go, then you're going away with this. That means you, you imagine you're reading newspaper or books on that sofa at your home, that you're that's your future coffin. I'm sure that you will have a def different mindset or different reminder of yourself what is life or how long is a life, how you deal with your every day. Then I think that is the, um, the Buddhism also values about the impermanency. It means there's nothing about absolute or how long is your life, how, how, how smooth, how rough. I think this is how we deal with it. Also in COVID, this is very latest work that um, people said, oh, we, 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 we've been string and not can travel, we can go out the room, even you just see from the window, that's outside, we are locked inside. So yes, physically we've got to deal with it, but somehow um, my thinking is, should we really upset and drag ourselves that physically we are facing a difficulty. So this project I, uh, is, I said, I see mountains, they are mountains. I, I, I put it together, my previous photography as a book. Actually, all photography is about mountain I see. The signage without the word, still a mountain. Uh, some water drips in the wall of uh, in Kyoto. I see mountains. That's a def definite beautiful mountains. I like a painting here. A signage is a mountain. Construction site is mountain. Some wire is mountain. Definitely, you can see mountain when I mention it, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't want. To, I don't have time to elaborate this one. Definitely, it's a, if it's someone interested to ask me when you do the Q and A, like a slow mountain is not really a mountain. Mountains, some rusted metal plate is the mountain. So what I mean is, if your heart sees things beauty and you open, then you are okay. It's, all, it's a mind game, basically. Life is only your mind and your heart, not necessarily anything. You just start yourself in your own way. Just like the heaven on earth, life is up to you. It all depends on how you see it. So further go on is another work. It's called Painting by God. Uh, the first, uh, this is the first time I do it in Hong Kong in Repow Spay, and then you see some painting board out in outdoor. When people really focus on watching it, what happened is only a shadow. Also, there's a, a caption at the corner I mentioned. It's a painting by God, arranged by me. Uh, as, Deliberately said, it's not created by me because it's created by, if you believe in God, it's God. Otherwise, it's nature, sunlight, and the tree. And I dated, and also the time when the shadow is around, and then the work only exhibits on Sunday. Otherwise, 
it won't show. So I did this project in different location, uh, different occasion. Basically, this is to counteract with particularly city people, like from Tokyo here, like from Hong Kong. People are too busy not seeing things around and also not seeing things in the beautiful way that you just ignore, you just take it for granted. So this is Hong Kong project. Then you can see the composition of different, different timing. And also other times in, this is in a museum in, in Guangzhou, China. So this project uh, keep traveling. Uh, also, uh, two or three years ago, I did one in a group project in Kyoto, uh, which is Kyoto is my second home, by the way. I, um, so the project is, is uh, in, in this tea house. So I just shot all the shadows casting in this wall. At the end, I put together of these compositions, hand make a skull and exhibits at the same venue. This is how I just ask people to concentrate on the beautiful world which is around the corner in the wall in the same location. So at the end, also, I bring a pain, painting frame to searching the shadows around the city. Usually I will mark all the locations and time that I shot that particular shadows. So at the end I run a lot of workshop. Not only are doing this observe and appreciate and capture the moment that I see the composition or things around me, and also I will encourage youngsters or public come to give them a whiteboard then you try to see how you see the world then. So at the end, it, it, it comes back a lot of interesting uh, experience, I would say experience rather than the artwork, but they, because it's very unusual to them, because the assignment is capture the shadow. That's normal, not normally they will see in the daily life. So, so I run a lot of workshops like this. At the end, uh, coming to this, uh, this year, the uh, and she called uh, Sumari the art film that I, I will, I'm representing Hong Kong uh, as an artist uh, this year. So I, I do the same project here. So I bring two artwork. One is this uh, painting by God. So I also running workshops with the Chunan, the local neighbors. I work with them. I can't physically go there last uh, few months. I just work with them on Zoom, talking to the neighbors, they doing the artwork, then they will, will presenting their artwork in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the venue. And also I bring another, my project with nature called A Bowl of Life. So talking about the bowl at your home normally is for rice or for soup. It's uh, you eating for yourself. Now it's not for yourself. Now it's uh, you give mind, your heart to plant another life, the green life. So this is talk about the give and take kind of manner versus the nature and this world. So, so I also ask friends from Hong Kong and friends from Tunan, the exchangeable, 
they give a little bit background of each other. They try to share the different cultural background, and then every one of them just plant. Okay, so the Hong Kong plant. Then I take a photo to exhibit in there, and then the Junnan neighbors plant, uh, just showing the physical plant like this. You can see I'm doing Zoom with them throughout the workshops. So this show, definitely you can see I hang their work and their plants there, but not necessarily the physical creation. I would say the response, the experience, how they into this workshop or the planting process, how they feel about the nature, how they feel about their life. That is the most important part of the show. So, so that's why it's like a dialogue. Uh, the wordings on the wall, the wordings on the video is important. Maybe I show you some a little clips on the documentary of the painting by God uh, workshop. Then. The first video piece. Yesan 三人とも日向ぼっこって言うんでしょうか。暖かいところに あの、津波町やっぱり水も美味しいので、ま、そういうのも含めてちょっとつながるところもあるのかなと思って、これを選びました。シンプルですよね、影って。だから美意識の根本になる部分もあるんではないかなと思う。水滴が普段としたり落ちてるんですよね。その影が覚えてるんだけど、まあ何枚か撮ったうちの1枚。今年大雪で負ける桜がいっ
Thank you. Uh, thanks for all the participants. Actually, they, they, they wrote, they said a lot of very emotional and very touching messages. Hope you guys in November, right? You guys going to November and see it from the wall, see it from the booklet. Um, yes, a lot of very touching emotional messages about nature, about people's relations. Um, in Chinese saying, it's true uh, goodness and beauty. That's how we usually describe the, 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 this world. I don't know if it's similar related in Japanese. Um, but to me, these three words or three components of life, I usually I would say it like that. When you have truth, adding up together with your good heart, goodness, that is beauty. Although they are not artists, they are just normal people and neighbors, but they, when they, they, they do things, they act things with their true heart and their kind heart, that's beauty. And also the APO, I mean the Hong Kong organizer, quick, keep questioning me, Stanley, hang your artwork there, it's okay. You're painting by God, you're a bow of life. Why you bother to ask so many other people? They're not artists. Are you worrying? They're not good enough, not beautiful enough on the wall at the end. I said, no, no worry. That will be beautiful. I think proved it now. They are very glad that finally we saw a lot of beautiful photos and the, 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 the bonsai little on the bow there. Uh, to sum it up, I would say life is a journey that full of choices. People think, people calculate, but I recommend don't. Usually that might not be follow, follow your heart. Sometimes it's conflicting. If making a choice, I would say follow your heart rather than follow your brain and too much thinking. That's how I experience, how I gain from this logic and values. I would really recommend you to just to see what the difference is about. Yeah, I took a lot of photos in Japan. Yeah, these are in your, uh, also the museum around this area. So when, when we say, uh, Stanley, you're taking a photo, then you means you see things from lenses, from, from the camera. Yes, but people will say before the camera that you see from eye, right? Yes, I also agree. But at the same time, wh why make your eyes see like the whiteboard? Because your heart see. That is my 40 years holding a camera that I can tell you if my heart not seeing it, it won't come out as a picture. Um, last, I think I should run it as a, on the loop bit. And a few years back, that uh, 2019, I was joined a big group show with uh, 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 curated by Asa that uh, uh, in 2121. That is a video work that uh, I show in there. It's definitely a Buddhism uh, message about Heart Sutra. Uh, it's about real uh, truth and illusions. Okay, Let, let's run this video, and at the same time, we can talk more about what your question and, and your comments. Thank you. Yeah. Stanley, thank you so much for such a wonderful, insightful. Sorry, it was very short. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, it was perfect. Um, so while the video is going on, uh, we'll start our Q&A session, um, but I think you know, I got to very inspired, and so I'm very excited to going to Ichigo Tsumari to see your work and see and meet with the people actually of the area uh, to uh, who actually created the work. So before we open up to the floor, I've got like a couple of questions I really want to ask. Is that you know you have um, you know you have multiple hats. You are an artist, photographer, designer, film director, and how, in your work, 
how do you like differentiate yourself when you're doing your you know different works? It's very simple. When every one I sign off is done by Stanley or is done by another mountain man, that tells you different purpose, a different values. Stanley do commission work, commissioned by artists. No matter if it's a cultural group, a museum asked me to do a promotional poster, a very commercial brand to ask me to do some branding project, that is Stanley. Not my message, your message. Even Wong Kar Wai's movie, that his movie, not my movie, right? When I say done by another mountain man, it's from my heart. I really believe that message representing me, my personal work. Sometimes, very occasionally, uh, some corporate client asks me, Stanley, can you do something different representing my brand? Face, say, face, for example, the Painting by God. The client, one client is a Canadian international insurance company. We really like your work. Can you just translate that painting by God into a short film representing my brand? Then at the end, I, I shot 30 minute short film, including that device there. Then it's for that insurance company. It's the Sun Life. It's from Canada. So. But for that occasion, even though there's a corporate client, I sign off another mountain man because that is representing me at the same time. So I, I don't know, yeah. Okay, so basically you, it's you that's created, that has multiple hats, but you don't really differentiate yourself when you're oh, doing any creation. I live through life, by the way. That's how I feel, yes. <laughs> Yeah, quite quite like that. Yeah. Okay, got it, got it. Thank you, thank you. You know, it's it's actually that leads on to my next question, which is um, here in Japan we have lots of um, gifted young artists who goes to art schools, art universities, but they don't necessarily become artists when they graduate from school. So they don't have, um, so they, they may not have the opportunity to become a full-time artist. Do you have any advice to these types of um, people that's coming out of school? It's a very complex question. Actually, I, I'm very active in art scene in the world or Hong Kong, Asia for 20 years, more than 20 years now. I never call myself an artist, never. You describe me artist, I'm okay. But I, you won't come out from my mouth. I do in personal work. This is my expression, this is my voice. I want to share with you, that's it. Actually, of course, I, there's a lot of art occasion platforms give me chance to share my voice. But that's the physical occasion. But I, in my heart, I didn't consider I, I must be artist or doing artwork. This is my personal work. So what I mean is, when whoever want to come into this, so asking, what is the purpose you're doing art? That is funda fundamental question. Just for your own interest, for be famous, as a career that you make a lot of money, to me, that's not the most important part. The most important part is you really believe that, you really want to share to, if you one day you can inspire others even better, that that is the real you. If you really got that message, you're so eager to persuade, to tell, you'll find your own way. That's a great advice. I think um, there's a lot of people, there's a lot, a lot of young artists who are very skilled and who are good at what they are doing, but I don't think they have, they really know the purpose of That's their why direction. I make money from the other things. When I do my personal voice, I really sincere that I really believe. So I, that's very clear cut things, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Now I'd like to um, open up to the floor and so, any questions? Johnny. 
It's Johnny. Johnny Walker. Um, do you ever take this? Do you ever have think uh, about this? What I when I see your work, what it comes to my mind uh, of uh, new ways to take this in a different direction or in other directions is uh, maybe like. Are you familiar with the Japanese writer Tanazaki Junichiro? Is one of the in the older writers in Japan. He's dead now, but um, he wrote a book called In Praise of Shadows. Oh, no. Um, so I'll try and get the okay. book and give it to you. Oh, thank but, you. But uh, it's one of his better novels. Maybe uh, I come across his kanji name because normally we, in Hong Kong, yeah, we, yeah. we read the kanji name. His name is, his first name is Junichiro, Junichiro. and family name is Tanizaki. Okay. And uh, one of his more famous novels is In Praise of Shadows. Oh, that's good. So I thought it, maybe it's interesting for you to know this book mm. and maybe create a series called uh, Homage to Tanizaki in Praise of Shadows. And maybe, uh, I don't know, how do you feel about doing shadows in more controversial things in areas like uh, the shadows of, of people left on the concrete and in the walls from Hiroshima bombing? Oh, yeah. Tanizaki. Actually, I... I'm not Bang's only shadow of nature, actually shadow of everything. In fact, I just about, because after the COVID we can't travel, I can't, we can't go out uh, easily. My next stage is I want to paint the shadow. Very that's good. my next stage. Good. Yeah, that's you great can to imagine. take it to different mediums. Yeah. Yeah. Then I want to paint the shadow in the real location, real time. Thank you very Thank, much. I'm waiting for your book. Okay, I will, yeah, I will give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Johnny. <laughs> Paul, Pauline. Hi, Stanley. Uh, thank you so much. I thought that was a fantastic presentation. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm also from Hong Kong, and it's such a pleasure to meet you here. So I've been in Japan for one week now, and I realized that a lot of um, Japanese friends, they're, um, they're very concerned about what's happened in Hong Kong in the past three years with the protests and then the pandemic-related restrictions. And at the same time, in Hong Kong itself, uh, there's this narrative about the need to tell the Hong Kong story. So in Cantonese, it is Gong Ho Hong Kong Gu Si. So I was just wondering, as one of the most representative visual communicators of Hong Kong, what do you think is the role of creatives um, at this very juncture when Hong Kong is going through a difficult time? And um, do creatives also have a role in telling the Hong Kong story? Uh, what is your view on this? Thank you very much. Thanks for your question. Uh, in fact, I briefly talking about the Red Right Blue project uh, in the beginning. That's how my personal work start. In fact, I did that 2000. Actually, it's only two or three years after the handover 1997, which is Hong Kong already going to be not positive enough, I would say. That's why I, I did that project, keep, keep encourage or uh, inviting people to do the positive spirit to each other. I think that is that stage. Uh, among now, I think after the COVID, I would say the world is changing seriously for the last two or three years. Not only Hong Kong, I would say. It's about the whole world, how we, we think life should be. We think what we should do, what we should not do, what we overdo in the cosmopolitan city, and now we should calm down and then rethink. I think for this rethink process about life and the world, that's my next stage about my world. Like the I see mountain, they are mountain. That kind of more inward thinking as a human versus surroundings that I, in my mind, I will, I will present my new works in coming two to five years that, that is more like a global manner, how humans look forward or step forward instead of only just Hong Kong, Hong Kong. I mean, that, that's, that's my, my perspective. 
Um, I think you're involved with M plus in, in Hong Kong. Oh, yes. And I don't think many of us had a chance to visit M plus because as you mentioned, mm -hmm. the last three years we've, we haven't been uh, able to travel so much. Can you say a few words oh. about M plus, what, what's your involvement there? And, and mm -hmm. are young artists in Hong Kong involved with uh, M plus as, as well? Mm -hmm. M Plus is the government-run uh, cultural, visual, culture museum, called museum. M is for museum. Plus is, I will explain a little bit what's Plus. It's a new museum. I think it's the newest in the world at, at this stage because it's open only uh, one year ago, uh, grand opening. So. Um, they got collections, they run the big shows in, uh, in the opening. Uh, the, the building is done by Herzog de Marong. It's a very, very important uh, com uh, contemporary space to house artwork and design work, actually. Um, I have many of my photos and designs there. Maybe I'm one of the longest lists in the Empress at the moment. Uh, I, I feel glad that I, 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 I they, they like my work to be there. And then, plus is a very important way to do nowadays museum, which is the print 10 years ago. I also have a, a lot of a media forum, internal discussion, what plus means actually. Um, usually when you go to the historical cultural museum like uh, Hong Kong lately have the Palace Museum from Beijing. I also curated a show for them, this historical culture. And then contemporary people, they okay, we do contemporary art. Design museum, okay, we do design only. That's a normal methodology or the way we construct to, 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 to bring to the public. But plus means we put it all together. We don't differentiate old and new design or art, or even beyond design and art. And I still remember when we do this forum, too new to people, stand here, are you serious? You put everything together. People were very confused and don't know fo how to focus. No, it's just thematic driven. Once you have a topic, then everything come to, come to serve to, 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 to to enhance, to multi-layer, to just talk about this topic. Then what, what's wrong then? So I, 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 I remember every time I talk to the media, media people doesn't know what exactly you guys are planning. I'm representing the emperors up to, 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 to say things about their future. I quote Maury Museum. <laughs> I'm honest, every time, say, at the moment, the museum I ran, I, I ran quite a lot of in, 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 uh, different important museums in the world. The only one close to Empress Future is Maury Museum, which they are doing plus. They're doing multi layers dialogue, to, isn't, isn't it? To audience. It's very new to me. That's so why I, I saw quite a lot of Maury Museum, the thematic show. That's how I really enjoy. So I think that's now Empress just start getting a, a very good response so far. And although overseas visitors could not come yet, and uh, uh, yeah, hopefully they will they will go somewhere in different kind of uh, form. Yeah. Thanks, Stanley. Um, both Nanjo San and um, Kataoka San are really good friends of ours. So. Um, I'm really quite uh, yeah. pleased to hear about you know your impression of Mori Art Museum, but um, you know you've spoken right now about um, the Hong Kong Art Museums, what's happening. Can you talk, elaborate a little bit about what's happening in the Hong Kong art scene, um, you know, po during and post COVID? During and post COVID, or what? What do you see? What's going to happen? You know, post COVID. Uh, the planning of Empress, and actually Empress is the visual 
Culture Museum among the, the whole compound called West Kowloon District. It's just next, next to the Jim Sarger in front of the Victoria Harbour, uh, including performing art, including the other uh, uh, culture and art form. So the whole culture, uh, 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 West Kowloon compound, actually the, the planning already more than 10 years ago, maybe close to 20 years ago, how to do it, a private sector running it, or at the end, uh, giving up this idea, then at the end, government running it, uh, raising the fund, a huge fund, and finally it happened uh, 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 from a uh, Chinese opera house, then the emperors, and later we got more happening. This West Korean project actually drive the whole Hong Kong culture and art scene to have a, a, a little bit more hope and future back to 10 to 20 years ago. So it's, it's, it's a very good progress. At the end, uh, Art Hong Kong sold the whole project to Art Basel Hong Kong. So this is another dimension that how promising that hard, hard, hard art scene on the institutional side at the same time in the commercial side that, that, that drive Hong Kong art in a bigger way. And also uh, the youngsters, the Hong Kong young artists got a lot of exposure, uh, got a lot of platform to allow them to, to share their, their thinking. Uh, if not the COVID these two years, actually whole Hong Kong have a a very, very promising future to next stage. Uh, at the same time, the Hong Kong Museum of Art in Jim Sha Choi also revamped, revamped this space uh, after 20 something years and then gained more space and uh, better venues and then also reopened it two years ago. So I think this is another uh, government muse uh, art museum uh, have a uh, a lot of possibilities. Thank you. Um, now I'd like to um, go to some of our online questions. And um, so we have one uh, from New Jersey, Grace, who is a great fan of yours. And she asks, um, would you call your whiteboard work conceptual art? Of course, there's a concept there. I didn't see, as I said, arranged by another mountain man. It's not, I didn't see I'm, I created that work. I share the, the glory of beauty of this world, sunlight, nature, all that together, not, not necessarily an artwork. It's just, I just I deliberately, sarcastically put the whiteboard and look. It's something here, something around you. So, yeah, I think, yeah. As I said, I never call myself artist. It doesn't matter. It's my personal work. <laughs> oh, even though when one year, uh, that organization in Hong Kong, um, uh, ADC Art Development Council, they grant Artist of the Year for performers, per visual artists, for filmmakers. So that year I was the recipient to get the artist of the year from visual art. So I'm, I was on stage to get the trophy, say thank you for the nominees, nominator. And then I say, I'm not artist. <laughs> because um, when you say art, sorry, these are all, all art related people here. I think art somehow is very hard to classify and decided the, de the definition in different, from different people, from different uh, background, from different stage of the, work, the, the history, that all different. So, so I think that is a very complex question. What is art? Actually, I try to challenge myself. I will present my paper or a talk in Hong Kong Chinese University to the youngsters in the, in the university what exactly art is about, in my own own will, that's all. So I think, yeah, 
I think better say your personal will rather than art. Um, the next question is from Raquel Son, and um, she asks, um, your presentation has jolted me to reflect on my life. What about uh, Zen that fascinates you that you have embraced in your life? Of course, I am Buddhist. I learned from Buddhism that what Zen means to me is bad based on that background. Nowadays, even though you don't have a religious background, you may have another religious background that we talk about mindfulness, right? Mindfulness and nowadays city people, how they see things and what's outside, what's inside your, your, your mind and body. I think the, when you say mindfulness, basically is in the, the, this termolo terminology also just kind of sand. You look at the Zen garden, we call Zen garden, right? Uh, or, and then Zen to me is a way you are more live for the moment. You just live now. That, that this fundamental manner or learning, you appreciate things around you you really observe, you're really into that. I think that, that mindset is sand. Just, are you, like tea ceremony in Japan, that is very sandful. Because everyone among that ceremony, people concentrate to taste the tea, feel the people next to you, feel the space feel the respect. I think that is when you're very focused on things, no matter how little, how big, that is, that is sand kind of life. I, that's why I, I said, although I, I take pictures from my camera, I really care what's in front of me. And from my eye, from my heart, I just, I said that, 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 send to me. Well, we have a comment from um, Sri Lanka saying, um, your career brings us understanding about your life and makes us calm. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stanley. Hello, I'm Rika Bapu, a founding member of Asia Society Japan Center. And also together with Saoko and friends, we are planning the Asia 21 Young Leaders Summit in Tokyo in early December. I was just very touched by the dream that you had that you shared with us. And I'm very curious what your dream is now or any other dreams that you've seen that you could share with us. Um, after the Heritage Museum rung up my 40 years work, actually exactly I was, I was 60. I, every time I do my tour, my, my guided tour, in the museum, I will end up my feelings, uh, how I feel after this, uh, like a sort, sort of like a retrospective. I will put all things aside, move on, live life again. That's how I feel. All this so-called success, famous, whatever, doesn't matter. It's yesterday, so. I will embrace the world after the COVID, after a very shaky political economy, whole world, then I will embrace and encounter to share my will for now and future. Because the yesterday is yesterday. That's how I want, I want to live life again, move on. Of course, my wife is next to me. <laughs> that that's how I feel. Okay, that I, I it's not easy. I know I, when I, when you're talking, it's easy, but I, when you put everything away, even I put all, I put all the trophy, the award trophy, more than I don't know how many hundreds of them. I just all throw it away. Then I think I determine because the world ahead is very very difficult and different. I would say for everyone, for Japanese here. From, we are from Hong Kong, from, from everyone. Well, thank you so much for such a wonderful and inspiring 
presentation. I thank all of us who's going to uh, Ichigo Tsumari uh, later this year. We're so excited to see your work. I'm and excited your going to tomorrow too. Yeah, <laughs> I hope you have great weather and oh, it's a uh, rice season as well. So the new crops are coming and so I'm sure you're going to taste lots of great food there as well. But thank you so much for coming and joining us and um, I wish the best of luck for you uh, with your work. So thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thank you everyone.